everybody. Welcome back to the vlog. Today, we're in Munich, Germany, following Bauma. Bauma was last week. We got to see a bunch of equipment all pine sawed up in beautiful places. But this week, we are getting back to business with our friends at Zeppelin Cat to go see many of their customers around the beautiful country of Germany. So we are starting in Munich. This is their Munich branch. We are looking at all of the machines and we're gonna go visit many of their customers all across the country, ranging from excavation to paving to quarrying to mining. So it's gonna be a really, really good few days. I've been looking forward to this trip for months now. So hopefully you enjoy seeing how Zeppelin does things, how the Europeans do things, and maybe we'll be able to teach you something along the way. That's unlikely, but we'll do our best. Ah. So around this yard, some of the European things we see are Zeppelin oil quick couplers on everything. Of course, many wheeled excavators custom painted machines, Red. VA booms on freaking everything. Yeah, literally everything. Everything. Yeah, look at that. Fits like a glove. That is something you don't see in the States. Yeah. It, it just fits right in there. Yeah. I like that. And of course, hella attachments, like all over. So this is a 313 excavator, smaller machine. You have your steel track pads, and then you have these rubber, uh, rubber pads that mount on top of the steel pads. And what these are for are so that this machine can go work in a city area and not tear up the asphalt or concrete as it's working. So this will be going to any kind of uh, urban environment where it'll be on this kind of surface so it doesn't damage it rather than working in dirt or rock where you'd want the typical track pads. It's so cute. Like you can almost pick it up. Like manhandle it. Yeah, that's a big one. Yeah. Still a wiggly boom? Uh, it, is a, it is a wiggly boom. It's just a little bit different than a variable angle. I mean, I, I don't... Uh, I need to see what the technical term for that is. Key safety feature, so this is a Caterpillar articulated truck and right here you have your headlights and turning signals that are extremely bright, but in case someone doesn't see the extremely bright lights here, you have these lights down here that are also extremely bright, so you have twice the extremely brightness, but in case somebody doesn't see both of these really extremely bright lights and those really extremely bright lights, we have this here reflector. So someone doesn't see this truck. Yikes. That's the reason for the extra oh, lights. What is it? Road homologation. So you can you get a license plate and yeah. you can drive on the street. Simon just actually explained this. So this can this is this is set up to go on the street. So you can put your license plate here. And then what you do is you turn your top lights off because they would be in people's eyes and that's a hazard. And you have these lower lights that are at the car level. You also have to have fenders on anything that drives on the street. That's quite interesting. I was wondering why all the graders have fenders. Yeah, right. Because that you don't see that in states. Easily detachable. So on site you just pull these. Oh, so you wouldn't run these because they would be destroyed. You remove them. Yeah. You have turning signals in the back. Wow. Oh, yeah, this thing can go fast. Yeah. And a camera setup. So to give everybody a little bit of history on Zeppelin, and I'm talking quiet because we're in the corporate office right now. The place is wild. So they started back nearly 1900 building airships. This is an original propeller, wooden propeller from an airship, like a blimp, you know, just the giant Goodyear blimps, for example. That's what they created and worked on through World War I, World War II. Now they're a German company that was considered a war product. So after World War II, they weren't allowed to make the airships anymore. 
So they transitioned, they took their technical expertise from airship building, they formed a foundation, and then went on to work with aluminum, metals, and eventually started building service trucks. They took these service trucks to this trade show, they were very proud about it, and Caterpillar found them in the 50s, I believe it was, and said, hey, you have all of these service trucks in Germany, we need someone to service our equipment in Germany, do you wanna be the German Caterpillar dealer? So they started dealing with Caterpillar equipment, Zeppelin did, and now here they are today with thousands of people, and not only there are they the Caterpillar dealer of Germany, but they're in other European countries. And so that's where the history of Zeppelin comes into play. So they started with airships, they still build airships. There are still many other companies within this Zeppelin foundation, but we're focused on, of course, the yellow machines. This is a A24 wheeled dozer and it looks new, but it's not. It's a rebuild, so what happens is they took all of the components off down to the frame. So here you have the frame. Caterpillar manufactures their frames to have multiple life cycles. So they took this frame, they inspected it to make sure all the welds were up to snuff, they repaired anything that needed to be repaired, they sandblasted it, they painted it factory again. So you essentially have what is a new frame. You took your components like this drivetrain set up here. All of this was undone, cleaned out, remanned. Then you had your hydraulics. Look, these look, these look new, like new cylinders here. All of your wiring harnesses were redone. So this is brand new. And then you drop in a new engine, all new hoses. That could be a remand engine. Yeah, so that's a remand engine. So that's actually not a brand new engine. That's a remand engine, but it has all brand new hoses, filters, fluids, that kind of thing. So what you get at the end of this process, as we've explained previously, is a just about new machine, but for roughly two thirds the cost. So this is a rebuild that's almost done. Yeah. yeah. So it's a... We have still not run to get to us. 17,000 yeah, 17, hours machine. 17,000? What is this for a year? What is this? 98. Yeah, building here in 1998. Wow. Yeah. I, was I was born in 95. So this is all just corrosion, huh? It was, yeah. We sandblasted everything. And no kidding. Primer and put new paint on it. So. This is a 777 engine. They just rebuilt it. Now it's on the dyno for testing to make sure it's up to snuff to go put back in the machine. Can I, can we go look in the back of this service truck? Yeah. I just want to see how it's laid out. This, in comparison, like we went to Gregory Pool recently and you can watch that video here. Nice. Um, they have big American service trucks, much larger than in Europe because we have the space, we can get these trucks in and out of the much larger sites we have. In Europe, they have either these Sprinter vans, Mercedes, or these little Volkswagen vans, cute little nugget. And instead of everything being on the outside, everything's in the inside. So they have the compressor mounted up there, tool bench, and then all of your drawers with your tools within this truck. If they need to do any heavy repair, they have to call in a smaller crane. But this can do most everything needed to repair most of these Caterpillar machines. That's the caterpillar. <laughs> it's a caterpillar. <laughs> Speaking of tracking, so here's the track shop. What we just saw, him rolling out the chain out there, puts it out here. You put your track pads where they need to go. You hand tighten your bolts, and then you use this to then tighten each one all the way down, and you get your new undercarriage. Oh wow, this is the only track press. No kidding. So we are shipping all the tracks here. Oh, so you do all the track work for oh, all of the ranches. Yeah. Wow. Very pretty. Is this my dad? Probably. Look at that. So this is a 6018 excavator, which is not made anymore, but when Caterpillar bought Bucyrus, they inherited this machine, which then became uh, the 6020B. 
So this was the model before the 6020B. They just basically painted it yellow. Then they took this machine, made it into a caterpillar. The engineers did some stuff to it. And then there we are, 6020B. I need this book. What this means is 98% um, of their parts are available anywhere in their territory within 24 hours, which is actually pretty insane. Oh, yeah. oh wow, he has the big ones. These are expensive. That's very expensive too. That's like, like this is like five grand. Yeah, I want the 6020 and the 6015. And then, yeah. Wow. That is something else. This model was a mascotchen in the 90s for, for that one. It's the coolest guy in the industry. Short short short. Short. Okay, let's go. Here we go. This next part we can't show you. We're definitely not going to a excavator yeah. in a yeah. That's not what we're doing right now. Don't worry about it. Put the camera away. Oh yeah gonna roll it up. This is one of my favorite things to watch. Yeah, that's so satisfying. And he'll just grab it and put it on a shelf. <laughs> 